Like anyone who's looking at climate change, you've read a hundred articles and you've seen these data points, but you don't you don't really comprehend it. And the, the moment that it becomes visual, or you know, later on in the project, the moment when it becomes a sculpture, it becomes material, you look at the thing and you suddenly you suddenly understand what that means. Seeing the change of a coastal profile, seeing like, oh my God, the country where I'm from, and this shape that somehow is connected to my identity, this is how it's gonna change. In a way that was the power of art or the power of public art, right, is to, to not only be beautiful, but to deliver that message and to package all the research that the students were doing for a year. The most important thing was not to start with what the artwork would look like. It would be best to do research, to begin to explore a kind of dynamic between these two countries, between Norway and the US. And we looked at Norwegian culture, we looked at Norwegian literature, the way in which traditions occurred in Norway comparative to American traditions. We tried to assess political positions in relationship to shared values and concerns. Uh, we thought a lot about the ecologies and responsibilities to that, uh, commerce and so forth, which really led us in the end to realize that the common space that existed between our two countries was the Arctic. They had decided after doing all this research on Norway and public art that they wanted to focus on the Arctic Circle and the Arctic Council, which has eight member countries, including the United States and Norway. The discussions about, oh, will the Arctic completely gone by 2030 or 2040 or 2050? So we agreed that the Arctic will. All this wow. unique ecology that doesn't exist anywhere in the world. It became clear that the data started to be visual through a complex lens. So we had this, as Manuel Lima would call it, visual complexity. The idea of the graphics was to really display the narrative in a visual way. So rather than moving to think how a sculptural form could narrate the research, let's move the narrative research into a two-dimensional graphic renditioning. And we pushed hard to find a way that might be more visually impactful uh, using color and form and shape and so forth. What you don't see is the design process, um, which is every one of the complexity graphics and the kind of final form of the marble sculpture. Those were all the product of tens and sometimes hundreds of iterations, right? Working through these ideas, looking at it as a group and kind of evaluating it, seeing does this tell the story we need to tell? Does this have the aesthetic effect that we need? While you don't see that process, I mean, I think the residue of that rigor is in all the work. My job was to take the complexity graphics, shapes and forms of the information, and begin to position them in three-dimensional space. And so the hope is that in that dynamic, the questions start to occur about what is going on here? Why is it doing this? Why is this interrelationship? It really is about how do you conceptualize? How do you think about purpose? How do you think about human interaction? And how do you embody that in a piece of artwork? Now, this is a great coming together of the Bennington plan process where students are driven by their individual interests that, that are shaped over the course of their time here to explore a wide range of disciplines, but with a focused purpose. At the same time, you have an incredibly experienced and renowned sculptor like John and a well-known conflict resolution expert like Susan, plus these external folks at, at uh, the State Department, and these external folks who are thinking about these larger questions of public diplomacy and, and working on them every day, engaged directly with Bennington students. Not only are you placing a public art piece, but you're, you, you just naturally are talking about diplomacy because you're talking about it, that intersection between two countries. So this really pushed students to think about public space, right, and to think about art, to think about the space that art makes, and the ways in which that imagination can push us to think differently about international relations, about relationships among people, among countries, among cultures, and the way that we engage with one another. And then one of the students came forward with this idea researching the perennials of the eight countries of the Arctic Council would be an incredible metaphor 
for a way that you would think about diplomacy, which is so important right now. The flowers really need to work together, live together to kind of thrive and make this garden, and that's kind of what we're suggesting with the sculpture in the first place. That sculpture has this opportunity to sort of jump into the middle of these continuums in a, in a, in a somewhat unique way and find ways to, to just take advantage of the circularity of all these, all these spectrums. I mean, not only does it, you know, enliven the building and give the building some visual and aesthetic interest, it, it does really help promote dialogue. I think that's a really important aspect of whatever art we put in these buildings or on the outside on the grounds place. It's got to be like a little diplomatic tool, if you will, a little mini ambassador. How does this work act as a mediator to those people who are going to be entering and occupying and working at the, the embassy? And how do you, in a way, provoke a reflection and not give a solution or a hard fact. How do you say, consider this? The idea that a place, a place is created by the users. So the artist is in a sense creating the space and manipulating as much as they can and then the, the audience turns it into a place, particularly in the realm of public art. The experience of it is what you take with you and that's completely private and intimate to each viewer. So it's um, it's kind of a paradox. The reason why I think it's important and also the reason why I thought Bennington would be a perfect partner is that a cross-disciplinary approach yields different perspectives. We wouldn't have gotten to the kind of incredible drawings and the incredible work that where we eventually landed if it weren't for all these people and all the the diverse viewpoints that they brought to the table. My hope is that the sculpture that we've developed is an exciting, welcoming, engaging object. I hope that those who visit spend some time with the work and explore it and explore its meaning and its implications.